Sometimes I think it's a little bit like creating a, a movie set. You're just trying to create these interesting little vignettes. Just create this fantasy space for people to explore. The museum is known for our exhibits. And the reason I think we're known for our exhibits is what we call the Milwaukee style. Part of it goes back to Carl Akeley, who was a taxidermist here, and he took a muskrat and then created a whole diorama uh, showing you know, where the muskrat lived and what it ate, and that was something new at the time. It's the you are there, you are in the environment feel that we try to create here. What we like to do at the museum is take the artifacts and put them in some kind of context. Like in the streets of Milwaukee, there's this a whole environment that you get lost in. Whether it be an ancient temple, a jungle, or a city, we always incorporate all of those elements. The more you look, the more you see. It's all the attention to detail and all the little hidden things and all the combination of sounds and sights and all the sensory parts of the exhibit. My part is to try and keep it accurate and historically, like I'm the one who can suggest which arch we could use that would uh, be a good size. They pull photos of, of real buildings and I'll look at them and say, okay, this is okay or no, that's not okay. The columns you see in the hall here are depictions of ancient culture columns. Some of them are Egyptian, some of them are Greek. The basic building block for this whole area were these big heavy limestone blocks. First we uh, put a wood structure down, then we went over with a fiberglass reinforced plasterboard. We carved it and then we went over with a tinted final coat and then after that we went to a stain, started staining just to give it a little more depth of color and after that we put a sealer over it. So all in all it was a lot of time and effort to, to get the look that we wanted. We wanted something that sort of said you're now leaving the introductory area and you're entering these themes. We wanted to show that visually and make something that looked dramatic and impressive. There is this arch which is actually part of the Roman aqueduct that you find today in Israel. We had some good reference photos and we just spent a lot of time just carving it and shaping it and we try and uh, take it to the next level, make it a little more, uh, little more weathered, a little more dirty, a little more lived in and a little more natural. Part of the interest of this Milwaukee style is to have some of these mounts that are interesting in that they were cultural uh, importance like the baboon that was one of the Egyptian gods. That was a mount that was uh, well, well over 125 years old. So it's one that we were able to repurpose, so to speak, you know, update, clean them up and make them look fresh and new. It's just such a rich uh, exhibit as far as the textures and the views and you know, so many really neat artifacts and uh, things that were done at the museum. One thing that really makes you kind of feel that you're in the environment is the lighting. So for example, the walls and the columns, we wanted to really bring out the texture on the columns and so forth. So angles and beam spreads for the fixtures was gonna be very crucial. I spec'd out all the lighting equipment that was gonna be needed for the exhibit, spec'd out where the track, the locations of the track and so forth, and spec'd out the light fixtures that are gonna be used in the exhibit. This is gonna be our first uh, major exhibit where we're gonna be going uh, entirely on LED. Another traditional form of artistry in museums are, are background murals. So we hired a, a mural painter to come in and do this. I come from a fine art background and I look at it like I'm composing a painting. It's nice to have a centerpiece in an exhibit. Carter suggested the chariot and we thought, wow, that would be an exciting centerpiece. That everything, all the other small components, they can all be scattered around it, but if you have a strong centerpiece, it makes for a well-organized and exciting exhibit. So you've got the, you know, the engineering and you've got the, the artist's craftsmanship and then you've got a story of a, of a child king and, and these big dramatic stallions and you watch kids walk in and their eyes get all bug-eyed and you see that reaction you just think, I've got artistic talent but I can use it to create this kind of exciting environment where kids can you know, really learn a lot and get excited and uh, make history come alive for them.